good day class. This video recorded discussion is intended for both subjects physics and chemistry. The topic that I'm going to discuss has something to do with dimensional analysis. Unit conversion is very important since not all measurements are expressed in the same units. In calculations, it is necessary that the units of the quantities match to come up with the correct answer. And the method that can be applied in converting one unit to another unit is known to be dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is a fraction wherein the numerator uses one set of units and denominator equivalent to the numerator in another set of units. Now, to put this concept in a simpler way, dimensional analysis is a method of converting unit to another unit. But just to give you a heads up, before you convert unit to another unit, you have to make sure that those units fall at the same quantity. So, what I'm trying to say is that you can convert centimeter to kilometer because they both units fall at the same quantity which is length. But you can never convert length which is centimeter for example into second because length which is for your centimeter and second which is for your time don't fall at the same quantity you have to make sure that both units fall at the same quantity before you do dimensional analysis now there are rules to follow in order for us to properly convert unit to another unit so these rules are, first, determine the conversion factor that relates the two units. So I'll be providing conversion factors or you can go ahead and check the internet regarding the different conversion factors for the different quantities. You have to be mindful about the correct conversion factor to be applied in solving a certain problem. Second, write the conversion factor in the form of a fraction. So here we have to identify which one is the numerator and which one is the denominator for your conversion factor. I'm going to intensify that part later. Now third, multiply the measurement by the conversion factor. Now putting all this together to synthesize everything in these rules, we have this technique given unit denoted as GU multiplied to desired unit denoted as DU over given unit denoted as GU. So you have to identify first your conversion factor and once you're correct with identifying the conversion factor to be used to that certain problem, you have to make it into a fractional form. Now in this case, your desired unit must be uh, your numerator and your denominator must be the, the given unit from your conversion factor. So this part of the technique, the one I'm pointing out, by, I mean the one pointing out by uh, the cursor, that came from your conversion factor. So later, as I discuss examples, you would see how I put the conversion factor into fractional form. So the given unit here is for your given from the problem. So you have to multiply that to the fractional form, form of your conversion factor. Okay. So again, to give emphasis, this dimensional analysis, analysis is a method of converting unit to another unit or method of cancellation. Okay, so there are rules to follow in order for us to properly convert unit to another unit. We have to make sure that units fall at the same quantity before converting it. 
Now, let's have examples in order for us to use and see the different rules regarding dimensional analysis. Example number one. What is the value in kilogram of an unknown object with mass of 261 grams? If we're going to recall the different rules for unit conversion, first rule is that we have to identify the correct conversion factor to be used in this problem. And according to the problem, we have to convert grams to kilogram. And therefore, the conversion factor that we have to apply here is that in every one kilogram, there are 1,000 grams. The second step that we have to do according to the rule is that we have to convert this conversion factor into fractional form wherein the numerator must be the desired unit and the denominator must be the given unit. In this case, our desired unit is in kilogram. So we have to place 1 kilogram in the numerator side. While for the denominator side, our 1,000 grams. Following the technique, given unit, multiply to desired unit over given unit. We have to plug in there the values. So we have 261 grams as part of the given in the example. Multiply that to the fractional form of our conversion factor. So 261 grams multiplied to 1 kilogram over 1,000 grams. The answer is, okay, we have to do cancellation here in order to have kilogram the, the final unit, okay? Now, our answer is 0 0.261 kilograms. In this case, we really follow the protocols regarding dimensional analysis wherein we identify the correct conversion factor, we turn it into fractional form and multiply it to the given. Now, let's have example number two. Here, it says that how many days are there in 127 hours? So, following the same protocols, we have to identify the right conversion factor. So, we are asked to make 127 hours to days. So, we have direct conversion for this particular problem because we know for a fact that in, in every one day, there are 24 hours. So, the next step that we have to do is to make it into fractional form wherein the numerator must be the desired unit while the denominator must be the given unit. So, that becomes like this one day over 24 hours. Now, doing the technique, given unit, multiply to desired unit over given unit. So, we can definitely go ahead and proceed plugging there the given, which is your 127 hours, and multiply it to the fractional form of our conversion factor, which is one day over 24 hours. And upon checking, we can definitely go ahead and cancel similar units which are found on opposite side of the solution. So, hours, cancel, and hours, leaving only the unit for day. So, proceeding to operation, 127 multiplied to 1 divided by 24. We can all agree that the answer is 5.29 days. Still, we follow the different rules governing dimensional analysis. Now, let's have example number three. A car travels 130 meter per second. What is the speed in kilometer per hour? So, you would see that in this problem, we have to convert quantity length, okay, unit meter to kilometer. Another quantity, which is for time, so we have to convert second to hour so there are problems which require us to convert more than two or more than one units so there's no problem with this because we can definitely go ahead and proceed to the different rules applied and you've learned earlier 
And just to give everyone a heads up, there are problems or situations in which you use more than two conversion factors. Now, in this case, let's identify the conversion factors that we have to use in order for us to, for us to come up with the correct answer and correct unit. So, we have to work first with the length, quantity length, for our meter into kilometer. So, we have this common conversion factor. In every one kilometer, there are 1,000 meters. So, we have to put that into its correct fractional form. It is conversion fact factor into correct fractional form. So, that becomes one kilometer per 1,000 meters. The reason why we put one kilometer as the numerator because that is the desired unit. Now, another conversion factor that we have to use is one hour is equals to 60 minutes. So, this is uh, a conversion factor for quantity time. So again, in every one hour, there are 60 minutes. So, putting that into fractional form, we have this one, 60 minutes per one hour. So, later I'll explain why I put 60 minutes on the numerator side while one hour on the denominator side. So, I'll explain that later. Now, another, another conversion factor that we have to use here because we don't have direct conversion for seconds to hour. So, there are two ways to work with this, having conversion factor for hour to minutes and minute to seconds. So in every one minute, there are 60 seconds. Now we have to make it that also into fractional form. So that becomes 60 seconds per one minute. I'll explain that later why I put 60 seconds as the on the numerator side while one meter on the denominator side. So, following also the same technique, given unit, multiply to desired unit over given unit in each of this conversion factor. So, plugging there the, the given as well as the conversion factors, 130 meter per second. We have to use first this one as pointed by the cursor in order for us to easily cancel meter and meter, leaving only kilometer. So, 130 meter per second multiplied to 1 kilometer over 1,000 meters. So we have to plug in also 60 seconds over 1 minute. Why we put 60 seconds on the numerator side? Simply because we simply because for us to easily cancel seconds here because second here on the given is found on the denominator side. So again, we can only cancel units if units are placed on opposite sides. So we can cancel seconds here. Now, we can plug in the last conversion factor, 60 minutes over one hour. So that will also give us an idea why we place 60 minutes on the numerator side because that could easily help us to cancel similar units here, minutes and minute. Okay? So, cancel similar units. You would see that the remaining units are kilometer found on the numerator side and hour found on the denominator side. Therefore, we really follow the correct unit for this particular problem. So, do the operation 130 divided by 1000, multiply to 60, multiply to 60. The answer is 468 kilometer per hour. So hopefully you understand how we solve this particular problem which require to use more than one conversion factors. Now let's have the last example. The recorded temperature in America today is 88 degrees Fahrenheit. What is 88 degrees Fahrenheit in degrees Celsius. Now, in this case, we're not going to use conversion factor or any conversion factors. What we're going to use here because this is this problem involves uh, converting temperature into another scale. 
So we're using here formula or equation. So we have to convert degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. So nothing to worry because we have formula to be used for this problem. So for Fahrenheit to Celsius, we have this equation degrees Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 multiplied to the given for Fahrenheit minus 32. So we have to follow PEMDAS rule here in order to have a correct answer. We have to start working with values inside the parentheses. And whatever the answer here, we have to multiply that to 5 and divide that to 9. Now, you might wonder where are where these numbers came from, right? From this equation. So 5 and 9, these are simplified fraction for the intervals between uh, boiling point and freezing point for your Celsius and for your Fahrenheit. So 100 interval for Celsius for boiling point and freezing point and 180 for your Fahrenheit for boiling point and freezing point. So getting the simplest uh, simplified version of it, we have 5 over 9. Okay? So we have minus 32 here. So we have to involve also another scale for temperature that is Kelvin. So plug in there the the given. So we have 88 degrees uh, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. We have to subtract that to 32. The answer is 56. Now we have to multiply that to 5 and divide that to 9. So our answer is 31.11 degrees Celsius. Now. For other cases like converting cell, uh, Fahrenheit, uh, degree Celsius to Fahrenheit, we have a formula. I've already provided that during our lecture. Also, we can convert degree Celsius to Kelvin. I've already provided the, the equation for that. But we don't have equation for us to convert degrees Fahrenheit to Kelvin. But nothing to worry, we can definitely go ahead uh proceeding first with converting degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius then whatever the answer for degrees Celsius you can definitely work with that for degrees for the Kelvin radian 